On the day that we're born, and well until we get old, everyone in my town is wired to have but only one desire, to star in a show that displays the reality of the perfection we get to be a part of. The town is called Harmony Hills, and I would imagine you never even heard of it. That's because it can't be found as easily as you might think. Only very few find their way here, and to be chosen as a neighbor, you'd have to be darn lucky. I had the privilege of being born in one of the many vanilla colored houses with the peppermint roofs. The cozy homes differ only in their sizes and are the perfect place for families of any size to spend their days at ease, supplied with the most brilliant form of entertainment. The people that live here are so proud of their way to be that they like to reflect that on their properties. The houses regularly get a new set of fresh paint. The grass gets cut so it won't grow taller than the usual one and a half inches. The rose bushes never go further than the property goes. The cars are all parked neatly inside the garage and well. I think you get the gist. Together with my mom, my dad, and my cat baby, I live in one of the houses with a bright green lawn in front. We'd never seen life outside of Harmony Hills, and my parents never wanted that to change. After my grandparents left, mom and dad put even more of their heart into the community and into our home. They wanted it to appear perfect, and it's not just the houses. We never wear clothes with any holes in them, and if mom sees a stain on one of my t-shirts, she scrubs the dirt right off until her fingers are almost bloody. If my hair grows too long, dad will stop whatever he is doing to drive me right down to the hair salon. The town and its people appear perfect because that's what Harmony Hills represents. And now you might believe that people feel suppressed, but from what I can tell, they all appreciate everything looking so perfectly swell. It gives them a sense of stability, and stability we sure have. The neighborhood is safe as can be. The adults like to meet up for walks, book clubs, or neighborhood cleanup sessions. The children go to school, have sports clubs, and play games. It's not too different from what you might know. Everyone aspires to be the best version of themselves, and therefore life here is full and happy. Our neighborhood is special, but the most special part of our lives is the one thing we all do at 6 p.m. sharp. That's when you won't meet a single soul out of the street because everyone will be sitting inside their living rooms. No matter how big the family, everyone will gather around the television and watch our favorite show, Hidden Hills. It is a television show produced in Harmony Hills, and for what I can tell, it is unbelievably popular. We have some other shows, like the Harmony Hills News and Cartoons for Kids, but nothing comes close to Hidden Hills. The show has existed for as long as I can tell, and while every season is slightly different, the overall idea is the same. A lucky family gets picked from town. Usually it's the one that values our community the most and reflects it on their outer lookings. That naturally includes the perfectly groomed house, garden, clothes, and attitude. It's the main reason why everyone in Harmony Hills can be a bit phony. They try far too hard to be inspired in hopes that they will be picked. When a family is chosen for the show, they leave their regular boring home and move into one of the mansions up the hill behind the gates of the restricted area. The only time when one of us gets a glimpse of it is when we watch the show. The individual mansions all have their own movie theater, indoor as well as an outdoor pool kitchen with hired chefs who make their dinners, and anything else you could ever wish for. And when their season is finished, they get to stay. Very few will have small parts in other seasons though. For the most part, they just get to enjoy their new luxury lives. The season that stood out the most to me was the one we watched when I was only 10. It wasn't an entire family that was picked back then, but only a married couple. I didn't know either of them, but they were really funny. In the first episode, they went inside the house and turned all the furniture around. Every item, they would lift up and flip all the way. Then they'd look at the camera and laugh uncontrollably. Mom liked that episode the least, but I thought it was hilarious. In the second episode, all the furniture was back to normal, and Mr. and Mrs. Tassie were giving us a walk through their new property. It was breathtaking, and we were even introduced to one of the neighbors, a young gentleman with silver hair and lots of charm. The neighbor would become a regular in the show. In another episode, the Tassies were alone again and were fed with all sorts of decadent goods by their personal chef. Without even taking a breath, they were filling their mouth with anything they could. They used the technique where they speed up the film real quick and so it was pretty funny to watch them shovel food in their mouths for what must have been a whole day, but we saw it in 30 minutes. The following episodes were rather boring. 
the Tassies took walks, went swimming, or played tennis. And then there was the blood pool. The Tassies had a whole neighborhood visiting them, and they had a big barbecue in their garden. The people who lived in the restricted areas were both families chosen in the past and the rich and beautiful who had always been a part of the town. The ones whose families founded Harmony Hills long before I was even born. The Prestige. They were laughing and playing and I don't remember much more of it except the entire pool was dyed in red. And they all went swimming in it and smiled at the camera as they did. Looking back, I know that program sounds absolutely bonkers, but I kid you not, we were all plastered to the screen when it came up. It was the finest television we had, and the families were always alright the next day. No matter how many scratches or bruises they had, no matter how much they were hitting each other, or screaming things that sounded otherearthly, the next day they'd go and play golf, or show us how to bake a cake in their kitchen, and all was fine and well. It's perfectly imperfect. Love. A beautiful home, a disgusting inside. Hidden Hills portrays what could be. None of it is real. It's a show. Mom would always try to shush me when I asked if that scene wasn't painful and how I didn't want to swim in a red pool. But honey, doesn't it look like the most fun? Imagine we would be one of them up there. Dad would add with a twitch in his eye. Being accustomed to that sort of violent television, I never saw what could be wrong with it. It was simply what it was, and every day at school all the kids would talk about the last brilliant episode and it would connect us all. The older I grew, however, the more I started resenting Harmony Hill. I hated keeping everything clean and pretty. I wanted to let loose at times and enjoy the life we have, not the life that we could have if we were on television. The only other person I knew who didn't enjoy Hidden Hills was our neighbor Mason. He went to my school and I could actually see his window from my room, but I was never allowed to spend time with him. My parents found that he was a bad influence. Mason was the complete opposite of the Harmony Hills dream. When he was 8, he stole scissors and cut his hair all crazy. He'd cut holes in clothes drying in the garden. When he was 16, he would regularly screw with both our house and the one of his parents. He'd draw slurs on the wall with markers, burn little patches of grass, or rip out flowers and secretly leave them for me as a present. Of course his parents started hating him soon. Like all the others, they wanted to be picked for the show, and their own kin was sabotaging them. They never showed their anger in public. That wouldn't be the Harmony Hills way. Instead, Mason would have another bruise on his face, hidden under layers of makeup. Not that it made him stop though. He kept ruining everything he could. No matter how bad his punishment, Mason never stopped and he never cared. He'd see my mom freak out because her flowers were gone and give a cheeky wink from the opposite side of the street while my mom tried her best not to shout until she was back inside. Even though we hardly were able to communicate, I felt a connection to Mason. He was the imperfect part of the perfect neighborhood and I was dying to get closer to him and find out why he was so different to the rest. So on a particularly sunny day, when all of Harmony Hills was getting ready to watch a freshly baked episode, I left him a note to come meet me in the park at 6.05 when all of Harmony Hills would be hidden inside. It's almost 6pm guys, get ready for another juicy look inside Hidden Hills. Tonight Deborah is showing her husband how to have a good time, the Hills way. Don't miss out. The daily announcement was blasting through the speakers all throughout the town, just in case somebody forgot what time it was. I told my parents I would be watching tonight's episode with friends from school and quickly ran out before they could say anything. It was the very first time I ever missed watching the show. Mason was already sitting on the swing set in the park. His hair was all messy and his clothes looked two sizes too big. When he saw me approach, he smiled and shouted, Wouldn't have thought you were a rule breaker, Kelsey. I sat beside him but wasn't sure what to say. When you have to be quiet for so long, it feels weird suddenly being free to talk. Why do you always screw with our house? I finally blurted out. Isn't that obvious? He grinned. Cause I like you. If you liked me, wouldn't you want my family to get called for the show? I asked with the eyebrow raised. Don't you think it's sad that all anyone here wants out of life is to be a puppet in a show? to entertain the masses so they won't realize that all this life is hideous, that they are living for someone else. It seems to make them happy. I think my mom would die if she never made it to the show. I laughed. His gaze shifted to the ground, and for a moment, we were both quiet again. Kelsey, 
If I found a way to leave this place, would you come with me? I was more than surprised by that proposal. I didn't know anyone besides my grandparents that had ever left, and from what I heard from my dad, they went on to live a dirty and horrible life after they got out. I shook my head. It surprised me that Mason was actually thinking of disappearing from the picture-perfect neighborhood where everyone aspires to have even more. I knew he liked to sabotage the beauty, but he hadn't always been like that. I remember he seemed to have a good relationship with his parents when he was little. Why do you hate the show so much? I know it's not the finest entertainment, but you know Kelsey, I'm actually glad you asked me to meet you. I wanted to do the same for a while, but I didn't know if you were ready. Ready for what? He jumped up from the swing. To see the truth behind all the glamour and shine, I want to show you the restricted area. The area was surrounded by many trees and a big golden fence. Nobody could simply walk in there, but Mason seemed to have found a way. Not exactly inside, but it gives you a decent view, he said on our cycle up the hill. We cycled up as far as we could, then left our bikes behind a bush and walked the rest. They're probably filming right now. It's not live though. Mason whispered as we walked in between some trees towards the golden fence. Duh, I know it's not live. They record the day before, I responded. He shook his head. They film months in advance and they show the episodes in different orders so people won't realize how bad the things happening in there actually are. We walked through a dense forest and crawled in between bushes with many stings. They were cutting my skin, but Mason told me to keep following. Finally, we made it to the golden fence somewhere outside the area as it seemed. There was just enough space to get a glimpse inside. That's the stuff they don't film, Mason whispered. In front of me, I saw a row of houses. They looked similar to ours, just far bigger with lots of decorations and golden windows. We were on the back of the buildings with a view to the gardens, and then I saw what Mason was talking about. There were people hanging from the roofs. They looked empty as if someone had drained all life of them. They cut them open until all blood is out and they fill the pool with it, Mason said as if he had been reading my mind. I felt sick to my stomach and just wanted to leave. I wasn't able to say anything for a while, so we just quietly made our way back, but finally I wanted to know what Mason had seen when he came up here first. It was a couple years ago. I only came once and I remembered I loved watching the show back then. I even liked helping my parents keep everything clean because I was so obsessed with moving up here. But when I came, they were filming in one of the homes we saw. They were force feeding the people until they couldn't take it anymore. They were crying and one of them seemed to have a stroke. They didn't even care. They're doing whatever they want with them. And for some reason, the actors don't say no. It's a sick game I never want to play. For the show, they edit enough so it always looks like fun and games. It's not though. Why didn't you tell anyone? I asked. Mason laughed. Don't you think I tried? Nobody cares what you say. They just care about what they see on that screen. Leaving Harmony Hills is difficult because of two reasons. The first one is simple. Most people don't want to leave. They either know the truth or they know it but want it nonetheless. The second reason is how everyone who lives here wants to keep you inside. They don't like someone getting out and telling the world about their paradise. When you grow up knowing only one truth, it is hard to break out of it. I thought mom and dad would learn, would learn to accept. I knew my grandparents couldn't get them out as much as they tried. They left before I was even born, knowing that this life was nothing more than misery. I loved my parents with all my heart. It broke me seeing them cutting the grass with a nail clip so it would be perfectly straight or how they would climb up the roof to paint it in peppermint colors how many hours they spent in front of the mirror to look as well as they could. But what broke me the most was seeing them plastered to the screen, watching Harmony Hills and wishing with all their heart to be cast as the next dead family. It broke my heart, but I knew I couldn't save them from their wishes. And no matter how much Mason sabotaged the house, there would be no escape from it. Not until we left Harmony Hills for good. I knew that for a fact when I got up this morning and saw my mother cry tears of joy. She hadn't even listened to all the things I told her. She just held the paper to her heart and smiled. We did it, Kelsey. We finally received our invitation.